Antichrist in Man, or a discovery of the great war that sits upon many waters. There has been much controversy about the finding out of this great war, that spirit of Antichrist, which God shall judge and whom Christ shall destroy by the breath of his mouth and the brightness of his coming, and in the eager pursuit of her to find her out in her scarlet color riding upon the beast. As some men have attained to glimmerings, some to a more perfect discovery of her, some they are that affirm this great war to be the Pope, some the Presbyter, and some the Episcopacy. Now, these have seen the war, but in a fleshly discovery. They take the fruit for the tree, the stream for the fountain. And in a word, they have seen her outside, but not her inside. They know her in the history, but not in the mystery. For upon her forehead is written, Mystery Babylon the Great. Revelation 17, 5. Now therefore, O man, whosoever you are that judges the whore by these carnal conceptions of her, that you are far deceived by her in her fleshly appearances to you. Thus while sons of men seek to behold this trumpet in her proper sphere and center, they deceive themselves by looking too fleshly and carnally upon her. Know first then, O man, that this great war is in you. While you seek to behold her without you, while you behold her in other men, she is in the meantime acting in a mystery in you. And while you despise the appearance of her in other men, she has by guile caught you and has stolen your heart from God and goodness. She embraces you in her arms. She kisses you with her mouth. She deceives you by her flatteries. While you think you have nothing to do with her, she is in your bosom. While you think she is far distant from you, and this is done in a mystery, and you see it not. Now then, looking upon this war spiritually, not carnally, in us and not out of us, in the mystery and not the history, once more, let us make inquisition after her and endeavor to find her out in all her subtle and close corners. For your better attaining to the discovery of her, consider first what the great whore is. And secondly, how she works and what pretenses she deludes your soul by. Thirdly, how a soul comes to attain a sight of her. Fourthly and last, how and when she shall be destroyed, and thus we may attain to a sight of Babylon with her rise and her downfall. First, what is the whore? This whore, this Babylon, this Antichrist, is your fleshly wisdom. That spiritual serpent you are deceived by and commit fornication with all. This wisdom of the flesh is the carnal policy of the creature. This was that Antichrist that appeared in and to our first parents, and that which they harlotted with from the Lord God. He created Adam blind and naked to this end, that Adam might not see, but God for him, nor Adam might know, but what God knew in him and for him. And so this Adam, though blind and naked, yet clothed with such divine robes as were altogether inconsistent to fleshly Adam. And so here was God all, and the creature nothing. But now comes the serpent, which is the most subtle beast in man's worldly heart, namely self and flesh. And that dispenses its wisdom into the heart of the creatures, and that birds bids them eat, and then their eyes should be opened. And they should be as gods, knowing good and evil. How man, desiring by the report of fleshly wisdom to have his eyes opened and to be as God, and to be no more a subject but a king, no longer governed but a governor, runs away from God, departs from his first lover, and commits adultery with his own fleshly wisdom. And as Adam in the history, so all in the mystery commit daily fornication with the whore, 
our fleshly wisdom by eating of the forbidden tree. For this forbidden tree is in us and we taste of it continually and our hourly suffer death for the same. This garden of Eden in the mystery of man is in you, in whom God has placed the manifestation of himself and has brought forth the buddings of his glory. And any of these you may eat, but there is a tree in the midst of this garden of which you may not eat, which is your heart, O man. This must be reserved wholly for the Lord. This God calls for in Proverbs twenty three twenty six. My son, give me thine heart. That is, you may ascribe nothing to yourself, but give over all man into my hands and willingly to be no more. Then I will be in you and to know no more than I shall know for you. This is that forbidden tree that God would not have us eat of. But the whole man with his wisdom, reason, judgment, affections, will and understanding must be given to the Lord. But now comes the serpent, our subtle fleshly wisdom in us. And that thinks much to let God be all, do all and have the glory of all but it would fain see with its own eyes and be as a god unto itself. So it forsakes the rest of the trees which God has given it to eat of, namely the manifestation of God in the soul, and takes of its own fruit and eats of that feast which flesh has provided, and so forsakes the fountain and runs to the broken cistern. Jeremiah 2.13 Thus our eyes come to be opened, and we see no longer light in God's light, but with the eye of self and reason, saying to a stock, Thou art my father, and to a stone, Thou hast brought me forth. Jeremiah 2.27 That is, attributing nothing to God, but all to fleshly wisdom, with which we have adulterated and harlotrized from the Lord. Thus, O man, you see what that great whore is, and where she lies, even in the innermost closets of your soul. Now that you may be further convinced that this wisdom of the flesh is the Antichrist, the great whore, do but first consider the names, and secondly, the nature of her. First, her names in Scripture are different, as first she is called Antichrist which is as much as to say, against Christ. Our man as a creature is not against Christ. But the wisdom in the flesh in man, this is against Christ. And so consequently, the great whore or antichrist. Secondly, she's called Babylon in scripture in Revelation 17, 5 and 18 verse 2, which is as much as to say, confusion. Now, all confusion that is wrought either in Pope, Presbyterian, or any other particular state is by the wisdom of the flesh. And therefore, this is the great Babylon. Thirdly, she's called that wicked one in 2 Thessalonians 3.8. Now, all the actual wickedness that proceeds from the sons of men flows from that original within, even the wisdom of the flesh. Therefore, the wisdom of the flesh is that great wicked one which is to be destroyed. Fourthly, she is called the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Revelation 17.5 Now, what is the mother of harlots? Surely this cannot be either the Pope or any other particular state. For if the Pope be the mother of harlots, then I demand who or what is the mother of his harlotry. Then what or who is the mother of harlots? Why, she is in us all in a mystery. It is the wisdom of the flesh in man, which is the mother of all, the abominations which is committed against the Lord.
This is that Antichrist. This is Babylon. Here is the wicked one. This is the matron of all iniquity. Out of the womb of fleshly wisdom proceeds all the actual transgression that is committed against the Lord. All outward appearances of sins are but the bastards of the whore, the children of the strange woman, and the brats of this great adulteress. And happy, yea, thrice blessed, shall that man be called, who shall take and dash these children of the whore against the stones. This man is Christ, who shall come in power and great glory in a Christian, and destroy and dash in pieces the conceptions, bringing forth an appearances of fleshly wisdom in us, and we shall show more at large hereafter. Thus, we have endeavoured to discover the whore, what she is by her names given her in Scripture, whereby you may understand that the whore does not consist by any outward state or fleshly appearances to you, but upon her forehead, which is her most open and palpable workings, there is written mystery. That this great whore may yet more fully appear to be the wisdom of the flesh in you, do but consider the nature of the whore in brief. And so we have done with the first query, namely, what the whore is. Now, the nature of the whore is twofold, opposing and exalting, both which you may find attributed to Antichrist or the whore. In 2 Thessalonians 2.4, she opposes Christ or God and is therefore called Antichrist. Now see, O man, whether this whore be not your fleshly wisdom. Look into your soul and behold and see how opposite your fleshly wisdom is to anything that is good or goodness. What means those often resistings of the spirit in you, O oh man? Do you not see how the whore deceives you? What conception bringeth forth or appearance of God is there in you? But the wisdom of the flesh seeks to devour it by violent attempts and oppositions. Therefore the text says in Revelation 17, 6 that the war was drunk with the blood of the saints and martyrs of Jesus. How has this mystical war, the wisdom of the flesh, martyred the appearance of Christ in you? So that indeed she is drunk with the blood of many a sanctified motion of the spirit in you. The wisdom of the flesh is that mystical soul that hunts after the blood of David, which is the tender appearance of God in the soul. This is what crucifies the lamb afresh and puts him to open shame. And all this is done by that bloody whore that harbors in your bosom. The wisdom of the flesh is that bond slave that always resents wisdom's children and the children of the free woman, which are the bringings forth of Jesus in you. In a word, this is that great red dragon spoken of in Revelations 12, 3 to 4 who stands before the woman, which is a Christian under the pangs of new birth, ready to be delivered of the blessed child Jesus, in whose heart God is begetting himself in his own form and image. This, I say, is that dragon, even the wisdom of the flesh, which is ready to devour the sweet babe, even Jesus, with his form and feature in the soul, and endures to make it an abortive. This is that mystical Herod, that seeks the ruin of the appearance of God in our flesh. And thus you see what the opposing nature of the whore is, who for her bloody opposition against the manifestation of God in his people shall have blood to drink when she shall be found worthy.